Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about blood pressure. Um, it seems to play a very important role in really all of the major chronic diseases except for cancer. And if there's a role in cancer, I don't know what it is, but there, who knows, maybe somebody knows that. But certainly when we come to neurodegenerative disease, cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, and renal disease, uh, which are really the main pillars of, of death, um, hypertension seems to work against you. Um, so what is it about everything that we've spoken about that ties into hypertension? Yeah. So high blood pressure, which is sometimes called primary or essential hypertension is extraordinarily common in our country. Um, and throughout the world, maybe one third of adults have high blood pressure. I mean, it's a huge percentage. And How is it defined today? In most p places of the world, it's defined as a blood pressure greater than 140 over 90. 140 over 90 or higher. Um, but in this country, uh, recently it was redefined as being greater than 130 over 80. But I, I think that for the majority of the world, um, the definition is 140 over 90. And from a physiologic perspective, where do you fit on that spectrum? I mean, you're the nephrologist, so you take care of the organ that is arguably the most sensitive to blood pressure. You could make a case that even more than the heart and the brain, the kidney is the first place that damage shows up. I don't know if you would agree with that, but is that is that a true statement? Well, the, there's actually three main sites where high blood pressure really causes problems. And the first one is stroke. It's the major cause of stroke. It's also the major cause of heart failure. And it's one of the two major causes of kidney disease. And so those are the three main pressure related uh, diseases, pressure that related conditions where pressure is driving. The higher the pressure, the higher the risk for stroke, heart failure, and kidney disease. Um, the uh, studies show that the greatest risk for stroke, heart failure, and kidney disease are when the blood pressure is like 170, 160 to 180 systolic is kind of the turning point where when it's above that level, there's a really a dramatic increased risk for these conditions. Um, but it's been known for a long time that there's been that there's a tendency for a linear relationship between blood pressure and stroke and blood pressure and heart failure going all the way down to 120 over 80. So, um, th so there are a lot of people that would like to say that you know 120 over 80 or 130 over 80 should be our cutoff um, because it's really a linear relationship. But most uh, you know studies done like. Uh, around 1900 showed that less than 5% of the population had blood pressures of over 140 over 90. Um, and so uh, based upon the, the normal Gaussian curve of the population back then, uh, probably about uh, 140 over 90 should w was the cutoff for what was thought to be high. And I, I'm a, a believer that 140 over 90 is a good mark for where we should be uh, viewing hypertension um, as a condition that really should involve, you know, active management. So Rick, does that imply that if somebody has a blood pressure of 135 over 85, which would be below the cutoff that you're saying you would deem the time to act of 140 over 90, at 135 over 85, you could roll around at that blood pressure indefinitely without any damage to the kidney? Yes, exactly. So there, there's relatively minimal risk with a blood pressure 135 over 85. It, 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 but however, it's, uh, it, in epidemiology studies over many years, you can show that you know 120 over 80 is superior to 135 over 85. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of The Drive. If you're interested in diving deeper into any topics we discuss, we've created a membership program that allows us to bring you more in-depth, exclusive content without relying on paid ads. It's our goal to ensure members get back much more than the price of the subscription. Now, to that end, membership benefits include a bunch of things. One, totally kick-ass comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, thing we discuss on each episode. The word on the street is nobody's show notes rival these. 
monthly AMA episodes or Ask Me Anything episodes, hearing these episodes completely. Access to our private podcast feed that allows you to hear everything without having to listen to spiels like this. The Qualies, which are a super short podcast that we release every Tuesday through Friday, highlighting the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is a great way to catch up on previous episodes without having to go back and necessarily listen to everyone. Steep discounts on products that I believe in, but for which I'm not getting paid to endorse and a whole bunch of other benefits that we continue to trickle in as time goes on. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, you can head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. 